I hope it doesn't sound like a childish question, but I want to know why why doesn't Maya just be practitioners? <laughs> he is not a practitioner. He, I mean, he doesn't is. want. Okay. Yeah, you ask so many thousand millions of people outside, why doesn't he want to be a practitioner? Yeah. Even I go everywhere and preach for thousands of people. Yeah, not all of them want to become practitioners even, let alone Maya. He has his power. He can create things. He can create beings. He likes to rule. Maya is as powerful as Buddha, if you want to know. It's just he lacks love. He lacks compassion. Buddha has compassion and love and power. He has only power. So he doesn't understand suffering of humans or you and I or the animals. He just look at it. His creation tearing each other apart, he don't care. He has no love in his heart. That is why. That is why when, if we practice anyway meditation, we must first cultivate our compassion by keeping the precept. At least keep a precept. Don't kill, don't harm, don't lie. You see, lying also harming others. Sometimes it does. Yeah? For example, like that. The precept is to keep you in line so that you don't harm and you, you don't uh, fall into the magic way because the, the maya doesn't care about anybody else feeling. He has too much power. He has anything he wants, anytime. He loves to rule, you see, with iron fists even. Therefore, anybody do something wrong in here in the name of judgment, in the name of law, he send them to hell. Even a practitioner who doesn't understand, mistakenly thinking that he's a sage, or just by ego or something, I still go to hell. You saw that? The Buddha said that. You go to relentless hell. That's why the Buddha pleaded with all his disciples and Bodhisattva, please, in the Dharma and in age, meaning when he's not there anymore, and his lineage already come to be diluted and no longer powerful as when he was there or when he just passed away. When the Buddha passed away, the lineage, bloodline is still there because he still has Ananda. He still has his son, Rahura, which also became one of the successors. He has Manjusri, he has uh, other, you know, Mauda, Galayana, etc., etc. They all of them take turn to become successor. For many hundred years, the lineage is still fresh and pure. But after these foremost disciples die also, then no more. That is a Dharma ending age for the Buddha life, of Buddha teaching. That's what he called Dharma ending age. Then the Buddha worry that the practitioners may fall into uh, the trap of the demon. That's why he keep talking so long, so detailed, so patiently, that please take care of them so that all his disciples are still alive, understand and try their best to take care of the later generations of practitioners. Yeah, you're right. I wish he became practitioner. <laughs> he don't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. Because he, he had not the intention to help any other beings when he practiced. That is why. He practiced just to gain power, to create and to rule over his creation. That is the intention. You see, depends on what intention you have, you will get it. Uh, if you meditate because you feel sorry for yourself, that you'll be deluded all these lifetimes, all this life, you want to better yourself, you want to improve. And also in case you can bless your generations, other generation, or help others, you know, spread the truth, anything, okay? Your noble goal, your noble intention. But he never had this kind of intention. He just bored with heavens. He bore, he's bored to become a kind of subordinate to high God or to the Buddha. He revolted. He wanted to be his own man, rule over whatever he create or borrow. This is a kind of ambitious. So a spiritual practitioner can even be that ambitious. And this is really sad thing. What? Master, like, I feel like if, if Maya does gain 
love and compassion, then he'll have, actually have more power. Because the more love and compassion you have, the more support you have from higher realms, mm. which is more power. How, I mean, I feel like it's not smart for him not I to know, practice. It doesn't make sense because if he... Yeah. He's not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He doesn't think that way. You see, just like, just like somebody who is so very intent on become rich or famous, no matter what cost, you come and tell him, my master tell you rich or Jesus say the richness in this world is, is nothing. Better put your richness in heaven. He would say, get out of my house. You see what I mean? Yeah. He's just one of the beings, you know, that has not uh, developed this side of love. Hmm? He developed only one side, one side, power. Hi, Master. I have a question about the Maya also. Um, in the book and, uh, from Master Kabir, Anurag Sagar, uh, he, he said that the Maya uh, is a child from High level master, uh, five, fifth level loss. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth level loss. Okay. So I uh, just wonder how the Maya becomes such a bad guy mm. because uh, com he from a good guy, yeah. and mm -hmm. he no have uh, traps uh -huh. and tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, how like human beings <laughs> here in the world uh -huh. because he he has in heaven with all the. Blessings. He's born in heaven. I told you already. He's born to be in the subordinate. Being oh. bored to be good, bored mm -hmm. to be um, uh, have to be in the rules. He mm -hmm. liked to rule himself. He liked to be a king. Okay. Yeah, just like some revolutionary leader, you know, he yeah. doesn't like the government. Mm -hmm. What do you wonder? The fifth level is also inside the shadow world. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna take you out, outside. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.